hell aspirants looking at current affairs for 20th april the news items picked up from the hindu newspaper are these 12 we we'll look at them in detail the first one no foul play in judge loya's death says supreme court so this is regarding cbi special court judge b h loya so he actually died in 2014 this case is actually a pil petition which has been filed before the supreme court in which it is alleged that there was foul play in his death so he is said to have died of a cardiac arrest in nagpur in 2014 now he had gone to nagpur to attend a wedding with his colleagues other judicial officers and it is alleged that th this cardiac arrest was not the actual reason and there was some foul play and he died the reason for this being that this cbi special judge was hearing the 2005 sorabuddin sheikh fake encounter case so sorabuddin sheikh is said to be an alleged gangster he and his wife kosar b were traveling as such and they were uh, stopped and a fake encounter is alleged to have been done by the police here so in this case bjp president amit shah was also an accused So the CBI judge was hearing this case, and in 2014, after his death, this case was handed over to his successor. And immediately at that time, the Amit Shah was discharged from the case. So that is where foul play is alleged in his death, and PIL petitions were filed, which the Supreme Court is hearing, in which the Supreme Court has concluded now that there is absolutely no merit in the PIL petitions alleging foul play in his death. so it has taken a critical view of these pil petitions too and it has said that whatever the judges who were colleagues of justice v h loya what statements they gave they have to be taken as indisputable written statements so these four judges his colleagues that the statements should not be questioned that's what the supreme court has said it's completely relied on those statements so the verdict traces the journey of judge loya and his colleagues in nagpur where they went to attend a wedding so the itinerary as such is also been considered and that is completely there it is said how they, these judges stayed in one room at a guest house and they there here he suffered from a cardiac arrest and he was hospitalized by his colleagues so this is there and the judgment of the supreme court presently is also directly attacking the senior lawyers who appeared for the petitioners in this case so their demand for wanting to cross cross examine the judicial officers on these written statements is also been questioned by the supreme court so uh, the supreme court is attacking the lawyers why do you want to cross examine the judicial officers their statements take given should be considered indisputable this is the supreme court ruling in this case also the verdict condemned the belated oral request made by advocate prashant bhushan that the judges here two judges should be recused from the case means they should not sit in the case of hearing because these judges may have known the judicial officers whose statements have been given here these cbi special court judges so such demands been made and attack on the judiciary is been criticized by the supreme court in this judgment now you should remember judge uh, judge loya case was also a case which had specifically been taken up by the next four cinemos judges when they were attacked the supreme court cgi deepak mishra so here they had questioned that how how the cases have been allocated allocated or the roster been allocated so that was also been questioned so this specific judgment is having that significance now in which the supreme court has also criticized pil petition so that is the next article too so here you can see the highlights of the supreme court order have been listed out that pils have absolutely no merit there were various pil petitions filed in this judge loya case death case so they say that they are frontal attack on the independence of the judiciary and trying to dilute the credibility of the judicial institution so this is the supreme court ruling here so this, as we discussed everything that is mentioned here and it says that political rivalries should be settled in the great hall of democracy rule of law should not be reduced to a carry and this is the timeline regarding the pil petitions been filed to even the son and daughter of judge loya had also alleged foul play in the death of their father the next is pil has become an industry of vested interest supreme court so the supreme court has derided the loya pil petitions as a case in point and are highlighting how public interest litiga litigations have become an industry of vested interests so rather than being used as a powerful tool to fight for the cause of the marginalized and oppressed pil petitions are being misused 
it says that the essential aspect of a genuine PIL petition is that the person who moves the court has no personal interest in the outcome of the proceedings apart from general standing as a citizen of the country. And uh, other thing, it says that PILs have now become a facade for people hungry for publicity or those who want to settle personal business or political scores. So the true face of the litigant is seldom unraveled is what the Supreme Court says here. So this is the observation of the Supreme Court. So it says that it is a travesty of justice for the resources of the legal system to be consumed by these mis misdirected petitions. So such petitions, it says that this is affecting the judicial functioning and if nothing is done to close the floodgates of PIL petitions and judiciary would be adversely affected. Then next is give a report on conduct of Kathwa lawyers says Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court has directed the Bar Council of India to submit a report within three days on the conduct of lawyers in Jammu and Kashmir who have allegedly uh, obstructed the filing of the charge sheet in the Kathwa rape and murder case in Jammu and Kashmir. So this we had seen Bakarwal community girl who had been raped and murdered by people here in which even police officers were involved. They had also obstructed you know, investigation in this case. So even the charge sheet was not allowed to be filed. So here in this case the lawyers conduct is being questioned. The lawyers were actually demanding that a CBI probe be initiated. So this said that the CBI probe was being demanded to influence the state police investigation actually. So this was also a farce. So the conduct of these lawyers is now being questioned and the Supreme Court has also asked the Bar Council of India to give its report about this. That it is also said that they not only obstructed filing of charge sheet but also obstructed the victim's lawyer from appearing in court. So obstructing the course of justice cannot be acceptable and that is why now Supreme Court has asked the details regarding this issue. Next is SBI customers can draw 2000 rupees from POS machines. So these are point of sale machines terminals machines which are there at merchant establishments means in shops when you pay by card. Uh, debit card or ATM card, so the debit card specifically or credit card. So the card is swiped on this handheld device POS uh, terminal. So this POS terminal, State Bank of India has said that its customers can withdraw money from these terminals too. So there are around 6.08 lakh POS machines of SBI, and out of these, 4.78 lakh machines are enabled to dispense cash as well. So since ATMs are not functioning presently, since the situation is improving gradually now, SBI has allowed this facility. So customers of SBI, actually RBI norms only mandate that customers can withdraw 1000 rupees in tier 1, tier 2 cities and 2000 rupees in tier 3 to 6 cities per day per card. So this facility has been opened up by SBI in which it says it will not charge any fee or such too. The next is... Notes being printed 24-7. So the government has said, the official says that printing of currency notes has six has been initiated at all four printing presses and they are being printed 24-7 non-stop because ATMs are running dry, these instances are coming to the fore. So the Security Printing and Minting Corporation of India Limited is said that all four presses under it are minting out 500 and 200 rupees notes without a break 24-7. So this is to meet an estimated 70,000 crore currency shortfall demand. So this money is being printed. So of course there is a shortfall. Where has that money gone is not clear and extra 70,000 ru crore rupees are being printed now. So how will that be accounted for is also a matter. Here you can see the four printing presses you should know about. So these are the currency note press at Nashik, bank note press at Devas. Bharatiya Note Mudra Nikam Limited presses at Salboni and also at Mysore. So these are the printing presses of the government where, where currency notes are printed, the four printing presses at Nashik, Deva, Salboni and Mysore. Then next is Kela Devi Tiger births a pointer to Space Crunch. So two tiger cubs were born in Kela Devi Wildlife Sanctuary of Rajasthan. So this this News is specifically important because these were tigers in the Ranthambore National Park but they had to migrate, go to the adjoining Teladevi Wildlife Sanctuary and there the birth of these tiger cubs has taken place. So 
because if there is overpopulation of tigers and tigers fight and there is a need for space for them and there is not sufficient space ranthambhor national park is over populated with tigers so this issue has come to the fore with this news as such too so cats are uh, the big cats means the tigers are making frequent movement to adjacent kela devi wildlife sanctuary so here the map is also shown you should also know that these are located in rajasthan because in prelims such questions are also asked so this is the ranthambhor tiger reserve this is the kela devi sanctuary and the other areas also shown here you can see ranthambhor kela devi which are adjoining savai man singh sanctuary lies here then this is the mukundra hills tiger reserve here so these are the two tiger reserves the ranthambhor tiger reserve is a huge region but the national park and the two sanctuaries lie within this ranthambhor tiger reserve so ranthambhor national park is overpopulated with tigers now and they are shifting to the adjoining sanctuary then next is aadhar does not record caste or race says supreme court so the aadhar case which has been heard by the five judge supreme court bench the constitutional bench here is now observing that the aadhar act is not recording caste religion or race so there is there is no such information which can be used to discriminate among citizens on these matters so this has been clarified in this case this has been a statement by justice d y chandrachur who is part of this five judge constitutional bench and also had led the nine judge bench nine judge constitutional bench in this case regarding aadhar only actually from this aadhar case a point was referred to a nine judge bench because an eight judge bench had already made a ruling on right to privacy so this right to privacy whether it is a fundamental right or not was questioned under aadhar so because aadhar violates privacy and whether private right to privacy is fundamental right or not there was a sub question occurring here so that was referred to another bench to decide on this matter and this judgment came in august 2017 and in this statement uh, judgment at the supreme court nine judge bench had ruled that privacy was intrinsic to life and liberty and inherent part of fundamental rights enshrined in the constitution so this was the ruling a significant ruling by the nine judge bench as i said earlier eight judge bench had already made a ruling on right to privacy so if the supreme court wants to have a fresh look at it it should have a higher or the higher constitutional bench more than eight judges means nine judge bench was so this was there so the same judge is hearing the five judge con constitutional bench case five con uh, five judge constitutional bench case of aadhar and this point has again been highlighted that privacy is a fundamental right but then there is no discrimination which is possible here so this regular hearing of aadhar case is going on before the supreme court and these points keep on coming then next is vehicles to come with high security plates from jan 1 so now this government has announced that it will have these high security registration plates which would be tamper free proof which will be mandatory for all classes of motor vehicles from january 1 2019 onwards so all new vehicles as such will have to have these tamper proof high security registration plates so these will offer protection against theft also so this is the announcement by the ministry of road transport and highways in which uh, in the new draft rules which have been published so automobile manufacturers will mandatorily have to provide for these high security registration plates they can themselves manufacture it or also acquire it from hsrp manufacturers so this you can see they will have inbuilt security features such as self destructive sticker with the engine and chassis number also the plates will be fitted in the front the rear of the vehicle and also inside the vehicle so and the wind screens as such too so here they will have a number plate tag with hologram so this is there so this uh, registration plate you can see this will be self destructive chromium based hologram sticker will be affixed as such and on the windshield as such too so the registering authority registration number laser branded permanent number engine number chassis number will all be there on this sticker and this uh, plate as such will be fastened with two non renewable non reusable snap locks so these are the details regarding this new number plate which will become which will come into effect from january 1 2019 so all these features are also given as a gist here 
Then next is no commercial driving license needed for taxis, autos, government. So this is the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways which has given an advisory to all state governments that if drivers are holding a private license, they will not need a separate commercial license to apply taxis, auto rickshaws, e-rickshaws and two-wheelers. So this is in the context of July 2017 Supreme Court order in which the Supreme Court said that a driver's license is sufficient to operate a light motor vehicle and separate endorsement is not required. So even under the Motor Vehicles Act of 1988, a separate license like commercial license or transport license is required only in case of medium and heavy goods passenger vehicles only. So for light motor vehicles, it's not required. So that is why even if they are used for commercial purposes, there is no separate license required has been clarified through this advisory by the central ministry to all state governments. Then next is NSA to head a new defense plan. So a new permanent high defense management committee called defense planning committee is being formed by the government which will be headed by national security advisor Ajit Doval. So this will help improve India's defense planning in the long term. So this actually will be having any significance if the government, same government comes to power in 2019 too. So this uh, defense planning committee which has been proposed, it will prepare a draft national security strategy. It will develop capability development plan. So these are four aspects. Then third is defense diplomacy issues will be worked on. And finally, it will improve defense manufacturing. So there are actually four subcommittees which would be there under defense planning committee which will look at each of these aspects. Policy and strategy, capability, development, diplomacy, defense diplomacy and defense manufacturing. So this is there. So this DPC, Defense Planning Committee, will submit its report to the Defense Minister. And as National Security Advisor is the head, the other members in the committee would be Chiefs of Staff Committee Chair, three Service Chiefs chair, as such, Secretaries to the Ministry of Defense, Expenditure and Foreign Affairs as such. This is The next is sustainable growth should be a goal. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi is in London. He is attending the CHOGM, that is Commonwealth Heads of Government Week. So the 53 nation Commonwealth, which comprises majorly of nations which were under British colonial rule. So India is also a member of the Commonwealth. So here the Commonwealth meet which is taking place, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has emphasized on sustainable development and climate change be emphasized on because these are going to majorly affect the small island states which form a major chunk of the commonwealth nations. So India also has uh, proposed to double its contribution to commonwealth small state offices in New York and Geneva. So this will help in taking care of their concerns as such too and India's relation with these smaller nations can be improved. Mm -hmm. So, after many years now, India is actively engaging at the Commonwealth because mm -hmm. earlier Prime Ministers were not participating for the last 8 years, but now mm -hmm. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is participating himself in the mm -hmm. Commonwealth Heads of Government meet. So, this initiative of India is also assisting it to reach out to small states. So, they make 60% of Commonwealth members. And they are also a significant chunk which will help India secure crucial votes during UN or any other multilateral groupings, you know, voting which is required. So, India also wants reforms at UN. India wants to be a permanent member of UN Security Council. So, it needs votes of members, member nations. So, this aspect is also there. And also, India views Commonwealth as a counterpoint to China. And its expanding influence is South Asia and Indian Ocean. So, that aspect is also important. Another point put forth is the uh, bilateral meets which took place with various nations, uh, nation leaders by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the sidelines of CHOGM. So these are the Commonwealth countries also shown here. You should know majorly Australia and Canada are members of the Commonwealth. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Singapore, then African nations here and in here in the Central America. This Guyana region here and Central American island nations are all part of Commonwealth and these Pacific Ocean nations too. Then next is the last news item. No deal on illegal migrants. 
so in the, on the sidelines of prime minister narendra modi's visit to uk london for cho gm meet it was expected that india and britain would sign mous and one key mou which was expected was on return of illegal migrants so illegal migrants who have gone to uk they have to be returned back to the country so this mou was expected but india and britain have not signed this mou presently in this present meet so that has come as a surprise because in jan 2018 also this uh, issue was taken up that this will be one of the major central pieces of the bilateral visit but this has failed mou has not been signed so this earlier mou which was there expired in 2014 so an updated agreement was required but presently it has not happened so british prime minister theresa may said that uk would consider an improved visa deal with india if at the same time we can step up the speed and volume of returns of indians with no right to remain in uk so india wants improved visa deal with uk and uk wants this returns of indians with no right to remain in uk so return of illegal migrants so india wants improved visa as such for its professionals and students so this give and take has actually not happened and we have seen that this deal has uh, as such has not been signed so these are the news items Thank you.